Air traffic controllers are people doing two basic things. First is expediting and maintaining an orderly flow of air traffic. The second is preventing collisions, meaning preventing two aircraft from colliding with each other and doing a big bada boom. Bada boom. Yes, air traffic control is customer service like any other. Like not any other, ATC is responsible for thousands of lives daily. Eat that, doctors. The customer here is not you, but the airline company, the company to which you decided to give your money when traveling somewhere by air. The person operating that single flight of that company is the pilot in the cockpit of that aircraft. Why does the pilot want this ATC service? Why can't the pilot fly the airplane and go as they like? The air seems so big. That's what we do every day on the roads with our cars. And there's clearly more free space in the air than down on earth. Why does there have to be somebody controlling them? You see, with cars, we don't travel at almost the speed of sound. Cars don't carry hundreds of people and thousands of liters of flammable fuel. If you spot a problem ahead of you while driving, you can usually stop the car in just a couple of seconds. With an aircraft, this is just completely impossible. When the risks are high for everybody's peace of mind, there has to be a system established to minimize the risk as low as possible. This system is called the Air Traffic Control Service. Wait, what about drone? At this point, smarty pants usually wonder why why, for example, your drone bought from a supermarket is not controlled. I can easily buy a drone, bomb some oil refineries in third world countries, and no one will control me. Or just fly around my city for a few hours and then forget about this expensive toy turning it into a dust collector in my garage. You see, there are two kinds of airspace, controlled and uncontrolled. Controlled airspace is the area near the airport and high up where most commercial traffic flies. Without communication with a controller, you cannot fly anything in controlled airspace. In uncontrolled airspace, anyone can do whatever they want. That's why no passenger airline will ever go into uncontrolled airspace. How does the controller actually control the flights? Radio communication is the main communication between air traffic controllers and pilots. Both the controller and the pilot use specific phraseology to ensure clarity and minimize the chances of misinterpretation. This standardized phraseology is defined by international aviation organizations such as the International Civil Aviation Organization, ICAO. By the way, if you want to learn more about ICAO, watch our other video. The pilot needs clearance for every step he makes. When an aircraft is preparing to depart from an airport, the pilot contacts the ground controller who handles ground movements. The pilot requests permission to push back from the gate and start the engines. The ground controller provides the necessary clearance and instructions. Once ready for takeoff, the pilot contacts the tower controller responsible for managing aircraft movements on and around the airport. The tower controller coordinates the departure sequence and issues a takeoff clearance to the pilot, including the assigned runway. As the aircraft climbs after takeoff, it transitions transitions to the departure controller who manages the aircraft within specific airspace. The departure controller may issue instructions to climb or maintain a specific altitude and the pilot acknowledges these instructions. Next, the aircraft is handed off to the en route controller who manages aircraft within a particular sector of airspace. The en route controller may issue clearances to climb or descend to different altitudes as the aircraft progresses along its planned route. The pilot usually requests these altitude changes and the controller approves them based on traffic separation requirements. During the descent phase, the en route controller transfers the aircraft to the approach controller responsible for guiding it to its destination airport. The approach controller provides vectors, heading instructions to align the aircraft with the instrument landing system, ILS, or other navigational aids for a safe landing. When the aircraft is established on the final approach, it contacts the tower controller at the destination airport. The tower controller clears the aircraft to land, specifies the runway to use, and provides any additional instructions as necessary. Throughout the flight, air traffic controllers issue clearances, mandatory commands that pilots must follow. These include takeoff clearance, landing clearance, clearance to climb or descend to a specific altitude, clearance to enter or leave controlled airspace, and clearance to proceed to a specific point or fix along the route. When the pilot needs a toilet break, he requests clearance by the code phrase PP or number two. All right, I'm hyperbolizing here. ATC Towers The easiest and most visible part of an aircraft control is each airport's ATC tower. 
Obviously, it's much easier for the controllers to control from the highest building in the airport. The controllers in the tower guide the aircraft on the ground in the area of their responsibility, which are the runway, what the airplanes use for takeoff and landing, and the taxiways, these roads that airplanes use to get between the runway and the terminal building. To control the aircraft safely and efficiently, what about all those flights high up in the air or those crossing the huge oceans? The controllers are working in those tall towers to see better, they cannot possibly see upwards to 10 kilometers or across the ocean, right? True. No, they cannot. That is why not all air traffic controllers work in these towers. Well, where do some of the controllers work, if not in the towers? Good question. Besides the bare human eyes, in route and approach controllers use radar to observe and monitor the aircraft. Instead of looking outside the windows of that tall tower, these controllers' eyes are glued to the radar screen in front of them. Radar is basically a system where radio signals are sent from a rotating ground antenna. The signal is picked up by the equipment called the transponder on board the aircraft. Transponder replies to the signal by sending information back to the antenna. It's like the antenna and the aircraft transponders are having non-stop chit chat. All the signals are interpreted by a computer. Every aircraft position, direction, altitude, and speed can be determined and shown on the radar screens, which are located usually somewhere at the airport along these other controllers. The tower controller can also use the same technology in some case when there is intense fog and you cannot see anything outside. Now we'll reveal by far the top five most common misconceptions about air traffic control. Stick around until the end of the video. In case you're dating a pilot and wanting to swag a little with your knowledge, pay attention and you might save yourself from some massive airspace cringe. Number one, hopefully you got this already, but let me repeat once again, an air traffic controller is not a pilot. Controllers don't fly the planes and are not on the aircraft. They're always on the ground, located at the ATC facilities, usually at the tower building, pretending to be the king of the hill. Number two, air traffic controller is on the ground, but he is not the person outside holding and waving those ping pong paddles with a high visibility jacket and ear protectors on. That person is called an aircraft marshaller, whose responsibility is to guide the aircraft safely to the parking spot when it's about to stop at the airport terminal to let the passengers out. Number three, air traffic controllers are not employees of the airline company. Controllers work for a company called an air navigation service provider, ANSP. That company provides these air traffic controller services to the airline companies. Basically, the controller working for the ANSP is talking to the pilot working for the airline company. So if you're considering asking your buddy controller for some cheap airline tickets, just don't. They'll probably not be able to get them, not even for themselves. Number four, air traffic controllers are not responsible for scheduling flights or determining routes. They simply guide the aircraft safely on the runway, taxiways, and airspace. If your flight leaves in the middle of the night at a really annoying time, the airline has scheduled that flight to be flown then, don't blame the controller for it. Also, when you've boarded the plane and the pilots tell you that the flight is delayed due to ATC reasons, there is a valid reason behind it every single time. Thank ATC for not crashing into the maintenance vehicle on the runway and don't die. Or the fact is that there are other flights as well and it would ruin your day when another aircraft crashes into your aircraft on the runway. Sometimes the reason isn't so obvious, a centralized system monitors and controls traffic flows into different airports. Sometimes the system calculates that if a flight waits at the departure airport on the ground for 15 to 30 minutes, it'll prevent it from flying in circles at the destination for an hour before landing. Again, the objective is to keep everybody safe and get everybody to their destination as smoothly and as fast as possible. Number five, finally, this one is not so obvious, but air traffic controllers are not responsible for deciding the weather or other external factors that could impact the flight. They rely on weather reports and information from other sources to make informed decisions. Air traffic controllers have many responsibilities, but they are not weather gods. If there's a thunderstorm or a tornado or a blizzard or insane fog near the airport, there's nothing that the controller can do. The controllers just follow appropriate procedures regarding the scenario. Sometimes it means delaying your flight or even not allowing you to depart at all. Just remember that safety is the number one top priority. If you think you're already having a bad day getting late, imagine crashing into the ground when the aircraft has been struck by a lightning just after takeoff. That's what I call a ruined weekend. We hope this video helped you understand what ATC is. Is there still something that puzzles your mind and we did not cover? Let us know in the comment section below and subscribe to be the first one to know when new videos are released.